The court case titled Winners vs. the United States was unique and transformative. Henry Winners and parties in Montana were defendants in the case. Court documents display winners in the singular possession format. Winter is the correct spelling of the defendant name. Another detail is the order of names in the court case title. United States vs. Winners is an accurate title for the court case. The case title is Winners vs. the United States. Winners vs. the United States began on October 27, 1907. A decision from the Supreme Court happened on January 6, 1908. The case citation is 207 U.S. 564. The page number is 564 and the volume is 207. Printed volumes of court cases are documents and official reports. The reports are records of Supreme Court decisions. Each report includes a volume and page number. The former U.S. attorney represented on behalf of the Fort Belknap Reservation. Occupants on the federal protected land live in proximity of the Milk River. The waterway is more than 700 miles in distance. Headwaters of the river originates at the Rocky Mountains. The system is unique because water discharged from the river flows in a wave pattern. An area known as the Milk River Confluence connects the body of water to the longest river in the nation. The longest river in the nation is the Mississippi River. The human impact on the environment was a topic in the court case. Impediments restricted water moving through the environment. Occupants in the Fort Belknap Reservation lacked access to a continuous water supply. The court ordered defendants to suspend activities impeding the Milk River. Residents in the community had justifiable rights to a continuous water flow. Occupants on the federal land deserved the right to access 5,000 minor inches of water from the Milk River. A statement about the preferential right is in the Supreme Court record. Quote, an interlocutory order was granted, enjoining the defendants in the suit from interfering in any matter with the use by the reservation of 5,000 inches of the water of the river. End of quote. Winters and other defendants constructed impediments in the Milk River for beneficial purposes. Defendants altered the flow, created reservations, and structures in the waterway. Natural capital was a commodity in 1888. People used water to maintain agriculture. Water in the Milk River maintained plants, animals, and wildlife. The treaty established in 1888 included rice granted to the Fort Belknap occupants. The water rights were implicit and select to the Fort Belknap community. Evidence of the implicit right is in the court documents. Associate Justice Joseph McKenna wrote the majority opinion. An opinion is comments shared by the Supreme Court about the majority vote. Justice of the Supreme Court voted 8 to 1. Justice David J. Brewer did not vote in the majority. The opinion written by Justice McNamara included this message. In view of all the circumstances of the transaction, this court holds that there was an implied reservation in the agreement of May 1, 1888, 25 Statute 124, with the gross venture and other Indians established on the Fort Belknap Reservation of a sufficient amount of water from the Milk River for irrigation purposes, which was not affected by the subsequent act of February 22, 1889, 25 Statute 676, admitting Montana to the Union, and that the water of the river cannot be diverted, so as to prejudice this right to the Indians by settlers on the public land or those claiming riparian rights on the river. End of quote. The Winter's Doctrine was a foundational standard. Tribes received rights derived from the court case. Water reserves were necessary to fulfill basic life needs. Water quality was not an insurance. Federal agencies did not establish water protection laws until 1972. The first comprehensive statute was the Clean Water Act. Federal authority established in the Clean Water Act applied to states and territories in the nation. Tribes did not receive authority to enforce the Clean Water Act before 1987. An amendment of the statute in 1987 established the tribal treatment as a state or TAS. Tribal treatment as a state was a subject in the 1987 Clean Water Act Amendment. Representative James Hamlet from New Jersey sponsored the bill. H.R. 1 passed in the 100th Congress as the Water Quality Act. Tribes treated as a state received authority over water quality standards. The EPA listed requirements for TAS eligibility. Quote, the basic requirement for applying for TAS are that the tribes must be federally recognized, have a governing body carrying out subsequent governing duties and powers, have appropriate authority, and be capable of carrying out the functions of the program. End of quote. An assurance of the Water Quality Act was protection from upstream pollution. Environmental standards limited the impact of pollutants in waters managed by federal authority. The amendment also enabled tribal-based water quality standards. Tribes could set standards for cultural, economic, and environmental purposes. 52 tribes in the United States maintain EPA-approved water quality standards. Low tribes received authority to manage a natural pollution discharge elimination system. 
An acronym for the program is NPDES. The program applies in the wastewater treatment industry. The NPDES program limits the fate and transport of pollutants in water. 47 state agencies administer the NPDES program. The EPA oversees the program in three states. The Navajo Nation is the only nation authorized to administer the Safe Drinking Water Act. Rights granted to the Navajo Nation developed after the 1987 amendment. The nation received tribal sovereignty after achieving various milestones. Assurances in the tribal authority rules validated governing authority over federal statutes. Along with the Safe Drinking Water Act, the Navajo Agency can administer the Clean Air Act. Navajo Nation representatives can set environmental standards to ensure air and water quality. Water quality standards are congressional federal regulations. The Safe Drinking Water Act is a provision for public health and safety. Water treatment standards and methods reduces risks. Lakes, rivers, and streams contain market pollutants. Purification is necessary to remove physical, chemical, and biological contaminants. The Clean Water Act mandates control the fate and transport of micro pollutants. Safe Drinking Water Act standards limit contamination in public systems. The Clean Water Act protects nature from methyl and discharge into natural systems.